These are our lines. They represent our service, the telephone. Ready for anyone to use, anywhere, at any time, day or night. To achieve that service, thousands of us work millions of hours a year. And we work safely. All kinds of work, all kinds of conditions, all kinds of people. We work hard to make every job and every assignment a safe one. We're proud of our leadership in safety. And we're proud of the many significant awards we've received. But even with such a fine record, we do occasionally have accidents. And when we do, accident reports are duly made out. I've been going through them, reading about serious injuries, broken bones, sometimes even deaths, and thinking about what is not in these reports. Pain and suffering, kids who miss their dads, wives who had to carry all the family burdens alone. But I've also found happier stories. In each one, the twist of fate turned mishaps into incidents instead of serious accidents. Near misses, we call them. Uh, many of these reports are complete with diagrams and photographs to tell the story. One of them involved a splicer who, uh, but let's hear about it in the splicer's own words. It happened right here in this street. My partner and I were assigned to cut out a cable bridge in a manhole. We parked our truck at the curb and set up warning flags and signs. We tried to lift the cover, but it was stuck in the frame. It had rained during the night. Then it got very cold and the rain froze in the crack. First, I used a chisel on the ice, but it was slow work. So I decided to try something else. I figured the acetylene torch would thaw out the cover in a hurry. Joe tried to stop me. He told me it wouldn't be safe to use a torch right at the manhole, but I went ahead anyhow, and he stood back by the truck. The ice melted fast. Without realizing what it meant, I heard kind of a hissing sound. Then all of a sudden, boom! Up went the manhole cover about 20 feet up in the air almost cutting the power wires. But the cover didn't hit me because I landed over by the curb with a couple of small burns. That's all. We found out that gas had seeped into the manhole. And also, when it exploded, the flame shot through the underground ducts to the next manhole, 175 feet away. A lot of bricks were torn up there, and the frame and its cover were turned completely upside down. Luckily, nobody was near it. Joe certainly was right. Why hadn't I listened to him? Why? That's what we've been trying to find out. Because when we know why, we can get to the causes and stop these things. Now let's hear a central office man's story. I had to move this ladder out of the way to get to one of our equipment frames. Somebody had left the soldering iron in the holder that's fastened to one of the ladder's steps. But he didn't put it where it belonged, all the way in. Naturally, I didn't think to look at it. As I pushed the ladder, the iron came out of the holder and glanced off my head. Luckily, all I got was a scratch on my face. It could have stuck in my head instead of in the floor. But why should it have happened at all? Why didn't the man who used the iron know that careless work habits are always dangerous work habits? Here's another near miss. It happened at night, but we wanted pictures that showed how it happened. So we set it up again in daylight. I was working in the tent, it was raining a little, and my partner was down in the hole. The floodlight and all the warning flashes were on. A car plowed into the tent about 3 a.m. It didn't hit me, but I got a couple of bumps, nothing serious, from equipment that was knocked into the tent. My guardian angel must have been awake and working, too. 
Why do some nighttime manhole jobs act like magnets that attract cars? As long as they do, you'd better help your guardian angel. One way is to park your truck in front of the manhole so that it blocks the way. You'll be protected while you unload and reload the truck and while you work. Also, use adequate warning devices such as cones, flashes, and barricades and set them out well ahead, as much as 500 feet ahead on highways. Then if you hear them being hit, you'll have a few seconds warning before the car reaches you. One thing I found out from the reports, it isn't always enough to just follow the rules. In planning, you have to look at each situation and try to figure out how an accident could happen. The next mishap, a near miss on a pole, shows what I mean. Not long ago, I went up a pole to place a drop wire 23 feet up. Before climbing the pole, I had used the ladder to put the span clamp on the strand and left the ladder against the bottom of the pole. When I got ready to come down, my right gap was in solid and the left one up a little higher. The pole leaned a little to one side. Just as I unhooked my safety strap, I swayed around because of the angle of the pole. My climbers cut out and down I went, 23 feet. My left knee hit the dirt. I guess I would have broken it if I'd hit that concrete sidewalk. My right knee hit the ladder. But the only injury I got was a few splinters in my arms. I was sure lucky. Fortunately, falls are not always serious. Although some telephone people have been badly injured by them. On the other hand, electric shocks are particularly dangerous, regardless of voltage. On this power line crossing job, I saw to it, as I always do, that the boys checked their rubber gloves before starting the job. Now, this particular assignment was to place a few spans of iron wire. At one spot, a 220-volt power service crossed under our line. Of course, we had to keep our new wire tight while pulling it in so it wouldn't sag down onto the power line. George pulled the hand line he'd placed over the cross arm. Tom held the reel so that the wire wouldn't sag. But somehow, it did sag. Maybe the rope got hung up on the cross arm. I don't know what did it. But do you know what I did? I rushed over and grabbed the wire with my bare hands. I got two shocks. One was from the electric power, and the other shock was mental. The realization that in a second, I could forget all I knew about safety. Why are years of experience forgotten in a moment? Why do we hold off for just a second to think? What will make us remember what we know? Here's a lineman who will probably remember his near miss for a long time. We had placed cable on a new pole line and we were wrecking the old open wire line. I was dropping the dead wires from the cross arms. Here was my downfall, a rotten stub. I should have known, because that old pole line had been in a long time. When I untied the last wire, yep, you guessed it, I rode her down. Had to. I was strapped on up at the cross arm. All I could think of coming down was no, no. I landed in mud, and that saved me. Then I thought, never again without a test. You know, there's one thing about near misses. They don't amount to much, as long as they're misses. But what about the future and happiness of those dependent on you? Do you have the right to gamble them against the small effort required to do the job safely? Do you ever climb a ladder, either on the job or off? I do. The wooden aerial ladder on this cable truck made a near miss for me one time, for two of us, in fact. We put up the ladder to do some work at this pole. After I got up there, I discovered I didn't have any pliers with me, and Charlie brought them up. Just after he handed them to me, the ladder broke. Luckily, both of us were able to grab the pole. We came down like a couple of firemen. We were more scared than hurt. And believe me, it wasn't funny. The soundness or unsoundness of a ladder or other tools 
can sometimes be the responsibility of a number of people. And that brings up an important point. Safety is everybody's business. My near miss was my own fault. I was trying to make time in my truck one night on a narrow blacktop road. Actually, I was overdriving my headlights. If it had been daytime, I would have seen the humps in the road. On one of the humps, the truck felt like it took off and came down at an angle, swaying. A little stonewall bridge was waiting for me in the dark. The truck hit the bridge and the body was torn completely off. It landed out in the field. I was able to get out without help and walk away. Got a broken thumb and a couple of scratches. Miracles do happen, but you can't count on them. The truth is that every near miss can just as well be an accident that involves serious injury. Why then don't we eliminate these near misses that happen day after day, both on and off the job, that involve those of you who work outside and inside, women as well as men? I use these stairs every day, several times a day in fact, so I didn't realize they could be so dangerous. Well, this day, I was on my way out of the building. I had a couple of things on my mind. One was Jane's story about her date. The other was my car keys. They're never at the top of my bag or at the bottom either, always tangled up or hiding somewhere. The sign? I'd always thought that was for old people who needed it. This is the way I finished that little trip. Trip is right. Why I didn't break any bones or sprain my back, I'll never know. Accident charts and reports are all right as far as they go. But what about the unreported near misses that happen every day? We should all be concerned about them because it's a proven fact that the more near misses we have, the closer we are to serious injury. Now, one thing will help. Careful attention to the work in progress. This will prevent many near misses. Perhaps it would have prevented this one. Our crew was adding several spans of new circuit to some joint use poles carrying 7,200 volts, about eight to 10 feet above our cross arms. The wire reels were on a trailer and the trailer was grounded to a pole guy, I'm glad to say. The man tending the reels had his rubber gloves on. Harry and I had the job of passing the pulling ropes over the cross arms. We didn't have rubber gloves on under our leather gloves because we weren't handling bare wires. These boys were doing the pulling. After they passed the fourth pole, they were pulling over 1,600 feet of wire. Tough job. So we thought we'd help them out. Somewhere behind us, the wires must have got caught on the barbed wire fence or some branches then let go and flipped up into the power line. We got a jolt that gave us each a little burn on one foot, the kind of hot foot that's right unfriendly. If it hadn't been for the grounded reels that must have drained off most of the current, we could have been killed. Why do people do things they're not supposed to do? Those men had their assignments, but their impulse to help caused them to risk their lives needlessly. Unfortunately, some telephone people have taken risks that were foolhardy. I was riding in a cable car 18 feet above the ground, taking off the rings ahead of a cable lashing machine. When lunchtime came, I was left halfway between poles. Instead of going to the next pole and climbing down, I took off my safety strap so as to slide down it and drop to the ground. I thought I had it snapped snug on a strand but it hadn't snapped clear on. Then I took the cable car straps out of the D-rings. I grabbed the safety strap and lifted my feet up so as to slide back out of the car. The strap hook came loose, and down I went. The whole 18 feet, the cable car with me. When I hit the ground, it knocked the wind out of me, along with any more fool ideas like that one. Hurt? No, but one hip was a little sore for a few days. In every mishap, luck plays an important part. Why then do so many of us gamble on the outcome when danger loads the dice? We can be safe only by recognizing danger 
and avoiding it. I didn't. It happened in this railroad yard. We were making repairs on a cable in this excavation close to the tracks. Trains came by quite often, and we were careful. A switch engine was standing nearby, but we understood it was out of service. We had just about finished the job when I reached for a roll of muslin lying near the track. The switch engine was suddenly right there and hit me on the head. But it was just a light tap with a small scratch. Lucky people. All of them good people, too. Capable, experienced, valuable. There are some who take their near misses lightly, or even brag about them. Others feel foolish or ashamed. Every one of them says, I won't go through that again. You can't always be lucky. That's why, over and over again, you see and hear this. No job is so important, and no service is so urgent, that we cannot take time to perform our work safely. You've seen 12 mishaps. I could tell you about another one. It was not a near miss. I'm reminded of it every day. And I will be reminded of it every day for the rest of my life. Call number 13 if you want to. It was my number. It need not have happened to me. Why should it happen to you? Why? 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 Why?